Welcome back to the channel. A few videos ago, I made a tutorial on how you can take some of the processes you're doing in Excel currently and move them to Python, particularly with pandas, and how easy that process can be. In this video, I want to go over a number of methods that you can use right out of the box, right in pandas, to do some basic to do some basic stats assessments of your data. Let me show you. If we use our pandas data frame as our as our starting point, and we will use the Irish data set because we're quite familiar with that data at this point, I'm going to show you a number of methods you can apply if you're familiar with pandas. So I've got a data frame, I've assigned the target column as the object data type, just to have a little bit of variety in the D types, and you can see what that will enable us to do. And so perhaps one of the first things you wanna do is assess the statistical descriptors of the data. And so if we look df.describe, you can see that we have a numerical summary for the sepal length and width and the petal length and width, such as the count mean standard deviation. But noticeably, we are missing the target data. This is because the D type for target is the object data type. So if you look here, the data type is object. So by default, that's excluded from the describe method. To include it, you just pass in the include argument and you can pass in a list. And so what we're looking for is the object. And so when we add object, we've now removed the numerical data. However, you see that we now have a new set of descriptors. So count, unique, top, and frequency. If we want both, we just pass in both. The way you can do that is uh, we can either say number, which is sort of a generic way to capture both floating point and integer data. And by doing that, we now have a larger data frame with these summary values in it top of the data frame are the object data type values. So we have our count, which is consistent for both data types, but we have unique top value and frequency as the top three. And for the rest of the numerical data, we have missing values, those NANs. And where we have our numerical summary, we have values here and we have missing values for the target column. And again, this is not the default when you run describe. So if you're missing some columns, uh, consider using the include. Similarly, there is an exclude method as well, and we can specify our percentiles. Okay. Speaking of specifying percentiles, say there is one you're particularly interested in and you don't want to use this describe method to access it. If you go back to our data frame and pass in the quantile method, we can pass in a list of, of key values which are the particular quantiles we want to see as floats. And so for instance, if we want a 10th percentile, we get this output where the, the true output is the 10th percentile of each of these columns. However, when we because we have a mixed data type data frame, we get this warning that we should specify that we want numeric only. And this is not uncommon. So you see this future warning. That's to let you know that in a future update of pandas, this parameter is going to change its default conditions. And so they're going to deprecate one of the functionalities and we would have to make some changes to get around that. One way we could just set numeric to true. You can see that future warning goes away. If you want multiple quantiles, we can just pass in a list of values. So let's say you want the 10th quantile a 50th quantile or 50th percentile, we can just pass in that list and you see that we now have a data frame where the top row is the 10th percentile and the second row is the 50th percentile. Now, this again can be ex extended to many other quantiles, but let's say we want to look at how these might change as a function of our target value. We can do that by using the group by method And if we use this by itself, we get this wonky group by generator where we don't quite have an output. The easiest way to see is to use the mean method. And so it's going to group by the target column as we specified, and then compute the mean value of each of the columns based on that grouping. Similarly, we can just switch this to quantile and pass in, let's say we want the 10th percentile and the 90th percentile. Let's pass in numeric only equals true. As you can see in our table, we still have our groups 
And within each group, we have our 10th percentile and our 90th percentile values for each of the columns within each group. And so we can now begin to dig really deep into this data. Let's say you want to understand if these variables are correlated with one another. The easiest way to do that is to use the correlation method. If we look inside there, there are a number of ways we can compute the correlation. By default, it uses the Pearson correlation, but we do have access to Kendall and the Spearman methods. And so if we run this, we get a table and we get that same future warning. And so to avoid this popping up, let me just remove that target column. One way to do that is to use a df.pop and just pass in target. And once we need this again in the future, we'll just put it back in there. And because now our data frame is just the numerical data type, we, we can eliminate that warning. And so now with this correlation, you see we have a data table with these correlation values. So it's, it's making pairwise correlations between sepal length and itself, which of course is one. And we'll follow along that diagonal as each variable is compared to itself. And then we also see the correlation between sepal width and sepal length, petal length and sepal length, etc., across this whole array. Now, one way to visualize this is to pass that correlation matrix into a heat map. To do that, we can just use the, the SNS is from the Seaborn module. I've imported as uh, Seaborn as SNS at the top. And so with that, you just pass in the method heat map and we can pass in df.core directly. We don't have to create an, an intermediate variable to do this. And when we run this, we get this heat map. Now it doesn't look great that the default color scheme here, I don't believe is a really good color scheme. And so we can use a new color map just by calling cmap. And one of the more common ones you might see is this viridis color map, where we have this sort of hot yellow down to that deep blue, purple, indigo color. And particularly if you have areas like this where there isn't much contrast, one way to make that pop a little bit better is to use a line. So we can set line width. By default, it's equal to zero. Let's just set it equal to one. We can also change line color. And let's just set it equal to black in this case. Not necessary, but just showing you some of the options you have and how easily they can be manipulated. And so here you can already tell we're able to generate some inferences from this data as we look at which variables are correlated with each other and which may be anti-correlated or inversely correlated with one another. Similarly, if we want to see what those values are, we can pass in anods equals true. And we now have the values of these correlations. There are ways to ignore this diagonal because it can actually skew what we see because it now adjusts the color map from the lowest value to the highest. And when we look at this diagonal, the highest will always be one. And so that can sort of actually hurt the contrast of your results. And this could maybe mask some smaller patterns that are present, but there are workarounds. If you want to know more about that, I can make a specific video on heat maps and correlation matrices. Just let me know. So we've, we've done this, we've done scatter plots in previous videos. Um, and so I'm going to jump now to looking at how we can assess these distributions. And so we've got a data frame again. And in order to build models from this, let's say we want to take this data and, and do something predictive with it. It's good to understand if the variables are skewed. The easiest way to do that is to use the skew method and we can just pass this directly to the data frame and we, it will compute the skew value for each of our columns. And so we can see that for the most part, all of our skews are relatively small. Small is considered between negative 0.5 and positive 0.5. That's where the, the distributions are considered um, symmetric. Similarly, we can look at the kurtosis, which tells us something about the spread of that data by just passing in the kurtosis method. And you can see we, we generate a set of values for that too. And let's say we also want to actually just look at what these variables look like. So sometimes we may not have a good intuition of what is very similar or what these numbers actually mean. To do that, we just pass in the dot hist method and we get this sort of wonky output where we have this subplot text and we have the sort of really boxy histograms. I, I don't like the default parameters. A couple of workarounds. The semicolon will suppress this output here, so this text will go away. And if we want to improve the default style of these, so this is a matplotlib plot by default, all I have to do is pass in the sns.setThemeMethod. 
and it will improve the look of the plot. Um, you don't even have to pass anything in there. It, it will now just apply the Seaborn theming to it. There are other options, but in out of the box, this makes these plots look significantly better. And so here we can see the distribution of each of the columns. So Supple Width has a very normal Gaussian distribution. And we see that the skew is really low and that the kurtosis also is relatively small. If we look at these distributions that appear a little bit more spread out, such as the pedal length and width, uh, we see that we have a, a larger negative kurtosis in these values. So now we can sort of see how these single measure summaries will uh, translate to these histograms. And if we're doing some sort of correction and we, we care about this, we can then either go back to these histograms or these statistical values. And so in this video, you saw a number of methods we can use to explore the data that don't require any other modules except primarily pandas. And in some cases where we want to add some styling, we can use Seaborn for the heat maps or improving some of our other styling. But these are all tools that come out of the box that don't require any extra overhead and can help you, again, transition some of your Excel processes to Python and pandas relatively easily. If there's more you want to see, like, comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.